everybody and welcome to another episode of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with co-founder of Warby Parker, Neil Blumenthal. Neil, thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. Hey, so Marriott invited us out. We're talking at the Fast Company Innovation Festival about innovation creativity. I usually ask people I meet like you, how'd you get this job? <laughs> I was very lucky. Um, I met uh, three amazing people who are close friends of mine, Jeff, Andy, and Dave. Uh, Dave had recently lost a pair of glasses in the seat pocket of an airplane. Uh, Jeff had a similar story. Andy was wondering um, why glasses weren't being sold online. Um, and I had worked at a nonprofit that distributed eyeglasses in the developing world, so I had some relevant experience. And four of us got to talking, um, and that led to Warby Parker. Introducing Warby Parker. Just $95 per pair, including prescription lenses. In stylish styles, both handsome and pretty. Try on five pairs for five days with our home try on program. And for each pair bought, a pair is distributed to someone in need. And that's good for everyone. Find your pair at warbyparker.com. I mean, that's the short version. I appreciate that. <laughs> And, um, and a little while ago, I read in Adam Grant's book, which is also kind of enlightening, yeah. how he kind of tells that story. Can you relive that a little bit for us and tell us sure. uh, kind of those early startup days? Well, uh, yeah, you know, Adam Grant uh, was one of our professors and somebody who's become a close friend. Uh, and we asked him if he wanted to invest um, in our idea. And we, a lot of people tell us our idea was stupid. Um, but he was actually one of the people who liked our idea. But one of the things that he was questioning was our commitment because we were full-time students at, at Wharton getting our MBAs. Um, and he was asking us, why, didn't, why weren't we dropping out to pursue uh, this business? Um, and I think we felt that you know, we thought this was a good idea and it kept us up at night because we had that feeling in our stomach. But we had a lot of work to do before we were ready to launch. And even once we launched, we didn't know it was going to be successful. So, um, you know, I was recently married. I wasn't about to drop out of school to pursue the idea. But I'll tell you what, while I'm at school, I'll meet with every professor. I'll get advice. I'll yeah. talk to our classmates who are incredibly supportive. We'll put together a business plan. Um, and then we launched. We launched the features in Vogue and GQ and the company took off like a rocket ship. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, uh, this case study he talks about is like one of the biggest business mistakes of his life. <laughs> um, and he's shattering myths. You know, the myth that he talked about was, you know, it's okay to maybe procrastinate. It's okay to maybe not have, not go all in, like everyone says. Uh, Gary Vee is famous for saying, you know, all in or nothing, right? You can't be half pregnant. Like, totally totally shattered that myth. Um, talk to us a little bit about creativity, and then I want to talk about UX UI a little bit. Sure. Um, I, you know, I think there's this uh, misperception that being creative just means uh, that you're able to sit down and suddenly come up with like the best idea in the world, um, and that's just blue sky thinking is how to be creative. And uh, I found that the tighter constraints you create, um, the actually more creative you need to be. So an example is like the fewer resources that are you are, the fewer, the less capital you have, the more creative you have to be in the use of that capital. Right, you gotta be it. Right, exactly. Yeah. If you have a brand um, that has a very tight narrative and core values, um, and you can define what you are and what you're not, um, you can create creative executions for that brand more easily because you've got guardrails. Um, whereas if you can do anything, that becomes very difficult to sort of narrow the scope of possibility. Right. Um, let's go to UX UI, which is typically a very technical term, but like, talk to me about the intersection of, you know, your website and maybe your brick and mortar stores. How are you thinking about UX and UI? Sure. Well, I think, well, can I just tell you too, like, this, I'm not being paid to say this, but like, <laughs> I stumbled on the Warby Parker organically, I broke my glasses, but like, it was seriously, you know, no, not blowing smoke, but like, one of the easiest, smoothest, uh, user experiences I've ever had on it. Oh, thank you. It was amazing. And so I was like, I was converted, you know, right there. Oh, Big awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I, we spend a lot of time observing people buy glasses. We spend a lot of time thinking about how we buy glasses uh, ourselves. And we just want to make that process as smooth and easy as possible. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't know. So is it that simple? You're just watching people, you're observing people? Literally. So if um, we're observing people, if we're rolling out a new feature, you 
test the crap out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but this idea that innovation has to be this radical change, how about you just make something a little better? Like, let's take our stores. We were watching people walk into our stores with crumpled up pieces of paper with the frame names on it from browsing our website. So the prescription or whatever. Um, no, no, even just a list of glasses that they wanted to okay. try on that they had browsed on our website. Now, there's got to be a better process than coming in with a crumpled up piece of paper. So we created favorites where on our website you can just like a few frames, suddenly there's a digital version, uh, a list. Um, you can have that on your phone, you have it on our point of sale that any of our sales associates can pull up. So that's like a, what we think is uh, a pretty easy fix to a problem we observed. But you know, I think people thought that this was, it was this like really awesome innovation. But keep doing that over and over again, um, and suddenly you have uh, an exceptional customer experience. Final thought: um, Look into the camera and maybe give 19-year-old Neil, uh, <laughs> if it's 2016 heading into 17, some advice so, if he's got a startup or some a big idea. Um, if, if I had a, a, a big idea, um, well, I think the. The, probably the big piece of advice is treat people well, um, be friendly, ask other people how you can help them uh, because Warby Parker is really the success of hundreds of people um, who are supportive that we had earned a lot of goodwill uh, early on and I think that's underestimated, underappreciated within the startup world.